This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. We come to you regularly with short business episodes, short private equity episodes, interviews with brilliant private equity and business colleagues, and, and, and a lot more, and, and business and private equity leaders. We're here today with Matt Wolf. Matt is a leader at RSM, uh, the sort of leading middle market private equity consulting firm, brilliant group. He is a, a brilliant leader himself. He's one of our most listened to guests. Matt, can you take a moment? There's so much going on in the private equity world. All of a sudden, you've got some of the biggest funds trying to very actively deploy capital again. You've got some of the biggest funds announcing that they're going to try and do some exits again. It, it seems like there's a lot of pent-up activity that feels like we're at the tip of the fire hose starting to get going again. What are your thoughts? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are people talking about there? Fill us in. Yeah, lots to talk about, as you said, Scott. So happy to lend my perspective for, for what it's worth. I, I think, you know, we, over the past eight days or so, we've seen a lot of um, economic data releases that have bolstered the case for a September rate cut, perhaps even multiple cuts, uh, 50 basis points possibly, but we're, we think it'll still be 25 in September, then November and December 25 each for what it's worth. But, um, you know, as we as we get closer and closer to certainty with respect to the end of this sort of this part of the restrictive or this phase of restrictive monetary policy, sponsors are are gearing up, as you said. Right. So they know, OK, rates will come down. We expect in, starting in September, that'll begin the, the cutting cycle. This is the time then we, we really need to deploy capital um you know and get on with sort of the next vintage of funds we need to exit these uh investments that we've been held holding on to for too long um and we think the deal market's going to improve as the rates come down you know it's, it's also interesting too right um state street came out with some very interesting data today from some of their kind of private equity fund indexes that they that they make and they maintain and manage and you know the the gap between performance in the S&P 500 and private equity funds is the widest it's been in two years with the S&P outperforming in the first quarter or the first half of the year, excuse me, private equity funds by a considerable margin, right? 10% to about one and a half percent in terms of total return. And so these sponsors um, who have many, especially as you mentioned, sort of especially the biggest, the biggest houses have been able to raise these mega funds uh, well, they have to put that to work, and they've, you know, been reading the tea leaves, and they, along with most everybody else, expect the uh, rate cuts to begin. So they're gearing up to deploy that capital and, um, you know, earn, earn their two and twenty. And, and how big is that gap? Because that's something we all look at between the S and P and the private equity funds. What does State Street say that gap is? Yeah, uh, in the first half, it was 10% uh, compared to 1.5% for private equity funds. Now, you know, I think um, that this data is that they put together is based off of the sort of returns and disbursements that they see from their their private, you know, high net worth clients that they manage. So they, they say they track it across 4,000 funds, $5.2 trillion in assets, um, and maybe, you know, so that's it. it it's a large amount of data, I'm sure. I'm not doubting how they put that together. Um, but, you know, it's you could maybe think of it as sort of an average return of a very wide range of returns, right? Certainly some private equity firms and funds have been outperforming the S&P 500. Others have not. But, it, you know, I don't think it should be too much of a surprise that this, as we go through this, regime change in the macroeconomic environment, the end of zero interest rates, and the coming kind of return of debt diligence um, that we're seeing this turnover. And on average, on a whole, we're going to see underperformance in the actively managed assets. Going forward, that active management is going to be even more important um, as sponsors will need to create margins create operational efficiencies to drive excess returns uh above the s p 500 and let's not forget too that the s p 500s themselves has really been dominated by six stocks um so even that is not a great gauge but you know these are the these are the sorts of reports and numbers that lps are looking at and this is what uh 
these are the benchmarks that these sponsors have to react to. And, and what's fascinating about it as well is that that you've got this and the private equity funds, I'm an LP in several funds. Obviously, it's and it's just a microcosm of a much bigger picture because the big institutional investors really drive this, not small investors like myself. But you've seen, you know, nobody's getting dis distributions recently. Uh, people aren't seeing those things, of course. And so there is a lot of that that you know concern about when will we see distributions again, and and when and they're you know you're you're making commitments for new funds, but in, on the verge of a situation where you're not really seeing distribution yet and so it's not surprising to me that if the s p has been up x amount and in contrast the um private equity funds aren't seeing returns you know it, the private equity ones will say it's a timing difference but all of us that are investors are probably a little concerned that you know as to how much of a timing difference it is absolutely um yeah and that's and that's the name of the game too and i think we've talked about this before on this show once or twice of how you know we will probably see in the future different funds that play into those timing differences, right? As we enter into this new regime that we expect to last for 10, 20 years of real positive interest rates, you know, we'll probably see funds that, you know, focus more on certain windows of liquidity and opportunities for liquidity rather than on a, a return that beats, you know, the S&P 500 or whatever. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch that. Uh, I guess one from this other State Street report, and, and I got to correct myself, I was right the first time. It's just quarter one data, so it comes on a bit of a lag. But the the Q1 data was 10.2% on the S&P 500, 1.5% on private equity. Um, but it goes on to note that private credit uh, performed you know, 2.4% return, so still below the S&P 500, but outperforming um, private equity. And, you know, we talk a lot about private equity, you can't, you know, private credit is similar, it's just another funding vehicle, and it'll be really interesting to see um, what happens as rates come down, um, if that provides some much needed relief to some of these over, -level or over levered middle market companies, um, and hopefully then some improved returns for those sponsors as well. Yes, and, and just absolutely fascinating, quite frankly. What what are people expecting for the last quarter of this year? What are we seeing? Oh, in terms of, of deal activity, um, you know, I think it, it's going it's going to be up, right? 24 is still positioned to be a low year um, in terms of overall deal volume, but we'll probably see, I would expect that overall deal volume to fall within kind of that 2017 to 2019 average uh, for U.S. private equity as a whole. Some sectors a little hotter, some sectors a little cooler than sort of that in initial pre-COVID phase. Um, and, you know, hopefully 2025 is an even better year, right? We'll continue, we expect to continue to see rate cuts in 2025 um, and, and should be a good year for, for deal making. Right. It, it it seems like there's just a tremendous amount of pent up interest and demand. It also seems like the institutional, both private equity funds and investors are, are going to start getting restless if they don't see some. And they've really been waiting for this. And some of the biggest funds seem to be saying, damn the torpedoes, we're going to get going again. I think Blackstone reported their biggest appointments in a couple of years this last quarter, even when the yep. interest rates were still high. I think, you know, uh, KKR also said they're putting a ton of exits this quarter, you know, almost regardless of, of a lot of things. And so it seems like there's just a lot, a lot of interest. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I think it'll still be a robust environment for deal flow. Right? We talk a lot about the interest rates, but the overall sort of macroeconomic story remains very strong. Um, you know, yes, the, you know, the labor market, it, sorry, uh, the, you know, inflation is starting to cool, right? The rate of change of inflation has been coming down. That's positive. You know, labor market, we, jobs report came in a little light, um, but we still have, we're at a multi-decade high, decade high for the proportion of prime aged workers that are participating in the labor force. Consumer sentiment, um, you know, is, is, isn't as strong as it has been, but it is still relatively strong. Um, we're seeing, you know, consumers continue to spend. Wealthier consumers may be shifting, downshifting somewhat in what they're purchasing, um, but there's the spending is still going on. Investment is still very strong. 
corporate investment, um, but really almost by any measure, has been very strong. The dollar remains strong. These are all positive things for the deal environment um, that, you know, pre the previous cycle was dominated by monetary policy, was dominated by where interest rates were and how you could sort of finance and engineer a deal. And that will continue to be important uh, going forward. And, you know, but as interest rates relax, um, it's going to become even more important to focus on some of those operational things to kind of take charge or capture some of these these economic tailwinds that we we really are enjoying right now. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, as particularly with what was going on in the equities markets earlier this week, or FX markets, just markets in general, financial markets, about a recession. But you know, the financial markets are not the economy. The economy remains strong. And it's a great time to to invest in quality assets at the right price. What a great perspective. Matt, as always, I want to thank you for joining us today on the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. It's always great to visit with you. I always learn something, which I view as the most important thing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, on the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Scott.